Hey, I'm Mr. Donut, and today I'm going to be helping you. Hopefully, I didn't turn my microphone off. I'm going to be helping you to create your very first Axie team. So, the reason I've created this video is because if you know anything about Axie or you're interested in it, you probably realize that you need to buy the NFTs before you can start playing. Now, that's a good and a bad thing because, yes, you do own your Axies. You can sell them later if you so desire. You could breed them. There's a lot of things that you could do with these axes. But where the issue comes in, I find, is not a lot of people have a chance to play the game. So even though you may be able to watch a YouTuber or a streamer who seems to be doing very well with a certain team, that team may not fit you. So this is why I'm here to give a more just uh, general sort of team something for someone who maybe wants to try out the game themselves even, uh, someone who wants to make a team for a scholarship possibly. This is um, really going to be just a basic team to ha and something to help you hop aboard the game. So the first place you want to start is at the marketplace. There are so many different axes. And if you don't know anything about the class types, you don't know what egg, adult, or breed count, mystic, pureness, MEO origins, or MEO2 means, it's going to be confusing. So just to begin with, if you are starting out your team, the very first thing that most everyone goes for is plant. So you can click this little button here to look at the plants. Now the important thing about the plants are that they usually go in the front of your team. Plants are used to take a lot of damage and get hit, so they should have a very high HP. So if you go to stats over here, it's a smart idea to raise your HP. And normally I tell people 58, well 59 to 61 is a good amount at 58 you would be okay too but in this video we'll do 59 so now that you've got your plant going you've got the 59 stats you want to make sure you get the right type of parts so when I first began the game we'll click on this very first one right here I had a plant with October treat which is pumpkin while I was playing the game I did not realize that it was any good I thought that wow this move is crap it does zero damage. Why does everyone like it? Yes, yes, I know. But the, the key here, what makes October Treat very good, is that it has a 110 shield. I meant to only highlight that. Okay, so 110. So when you're looking at cards, this is your attack right here, and then this is your shield. So what makes the shield so important is that is a 110 shield for your tank who is in the very front and will take the brunt of attacks in arena and in adventure. So my suggestion to most people is when you are getting a plant, first go for pumpkin. October treat. So you can type it in right there and it will come up with all of the ones that have October treat. So generally, too, another good thing here, we notice with this one, he's a very good example for us. He also has Carrot Hammer. So Carrot Hammer becomes very important if you are playing an adventure and maybe a little bit less in, I mean, sorry, it becomes more important when you're playing in Arena, a little bit less in adventure. So in Arena, it's key to be gaining more energy for your team so you can do high power attacks against the opposing team. That way you can either burst their tank or take out their mid and back lines. So Carrot Hammer is a unique one where if your Axie's shield breaks in that round, it will get, gain your team an extra energy, which again is very important in Arena. So for tails, there are a few different tails that you can see. I'm going to change the pureness to full so that I can just talk about plant tails right down here. Um, so if you can see, there are a few different types of tails. Each of them have benefits. So when you're creating your plant team, uh, hot, hot, spicy, um, 
Spicy Surprise or the Hot Butt is very good. This one stops your uh, uh, whoever you attack with that. It stops them from using a mouth move against you. Leak is a good one too. This one right here because the leak will stop any um, any ranged attacks if somebody attacks your plant if they hit it they can't do a ranged attack for the next uh, move next round and also the uh, sweet potato right sweet potato leaf right here has a very high shield and also a decent attack with 70 I believe but it deflects any attacks coming to your plant if the attacker is using an aqua card um, not a lot of people go for the cattail right here because it's zero energy and it is lesser in uh, attack ability. So it doesn't cost any energy to use, but it is not as good. So if you wanted to go for something safe, I would say stick with either the hot butt, the leek. Um, potato leaf is so-so, or as most people go for the carrot hammer, which is right here, you'll notice. So next, um, or you can also go for Yam if you want to poison your enemy as well. That's another possibility. So the tail is important, but it depends on your style. My suggestion would be a safe bet, Carrot Hammer. Okay, so next we need to look at a horn. Normally your horn, uh, you want to have either something that's healing if you're a big adventure buff, or you want something that can give a lot of an attack. I'll focus on the attack right now because it seems arena is much more important. So let's look at cactus. So prickly trap is a good one because if your uh, plant is very slow, if it's the slowest one in this round, this is this prickly cactus right now, it will deal 120% damage uh, if it attacks last. So it doesn't have a high shield, but it has a high damage potential. It's very good if you want to try and start um, hammering away at your fellow, or I mean your opposing tank. Another good one for the horn is the uh, beech wood. Uh, beech is the wooden stab. So wooden stab is used by a lot of people as well. Um, personally, I like wooden stab and I'll tell you why because Wooden Stab does 120% damage if your shield breaks. So when the shield breaks, it does about the same amount of damage as a prickly cactus would if you attack last. But the reason why I like Breach is because it's more likely that your tank's shield will break, and also if it's paired with a Carrot Hammer, you're not only going to gain energy, but you're going to deal 120% damage. And plus two, if you already have three energy and you have your pumpkin, like this one right here, you have a very high shield. So if you're getting hit by a crit strike, it will not be as detrimental to you. So a horn, try to go for something attack. If you really, really want something healing, um, you could do a rosebud is good as well. Healing aroma. So... Some people like this rosebud right here. It will heal your Axie for 120 HP. This one is good if you're playing a lot of adventure and you don't care about arena. But in arena, it is not used as much. But this, of course, is not to say that it's never used because there's a lot of teams and there's a lot of different ways of doing things. This is just the basics right now. Uh, the, the watermelon is not used as much for a horn as well. Um, it is a good move if you know how to do it, but I would just say maybe uh, there's no need to do a watermelon if you're starting out because a watermelon can attack the fastest enemy, but when your plant doesn't exactly have that strong of a offense, it's not going to matter. So what will matter is... Um, Let's go on to the next part, which is the mouth. So there are two different mouths that are very good. If you notice this Whistler one, as I call it, which is the uh, Forest Spirit right here, Silence Whisper, it can be good, but your plant, because most of your plants will, most everyone's plant will be in the front, it will do nothing for you. It will just give you 40 shield. 
that's about it. Because if you read the card, it heals the front teammate for 190 HP. This is great if a back or mid has it and keeps your uh, tank or your mid alive in that case. But if it's at the very front, it's not going to do much of anything. So not that it's a bad move, it just needs to be used in a different way. So the parts that I would suggest for the mouth are Sirius, which is Vegetal Bite, and also Zigzag, which is, uh, let's see, the a Drain Bite, yes. <sighs> I wanted to call it something else. But anyway, so as you'll notice, this one has a strawberry on its head too. If you're really a healing buff, this one costs two energy right, right here but it also will heal your Axie for 270. So even if it's at the front or the back, no matter where it is, if it's, it has an Axie in front of it, it will heal the Axie in front of it. If it's the Axie, it, if it is the frontmost Axie, it will be healed 270. So if you really do wanna heal, that, that's an option right there, but it costs two energy, be aware of that. So for the very first one that I was talking about, the mouth, we have the Drain Bite. Why Drain Bite is good is that it can heal your Axie for about 60. So the damage that, it, that this card inflicts, it will heal back your Axie, but it also has 60 shield. So if you have 110 shield over here and you add 60, you have yourself 170 shield while you're regaining potentially health. So it's a very important one, can be used well. I've seen it in Arena, and it's also used in Adventure. The other one I was talking about is Sirius. Now why Sirius is important is because it can steal one energy from your opponent when it's comboed with another card. It only has 30 shield and it only does 30 damage, but that's okay because really the key behind this one is you're trying to take away an energy from your opponent and gain yourself one for your team. So if you get a an Axie, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a plant right here with um, some of these uh, features that I talked about, and this is roughly what it will look like. So we're gonna go for the beech wood, like I said earlier, and then we'll just do a carrot hammer for the tail. So this is what it should look like. At the current moment, you can get one of these for about $203. That's not so bad, you know, if you are thinking about investing. The key here too, that is an, another key I mean here that's important is you want something that's at least 61 to 59 health. So that's good, you want your good health and it has all the right cards. So there's something to consider. That's our first Axie, the plant. Now, a lot of people for the midline enjoy something along the lines of either a uh, beast mech for high attack and all of that, or they do a double aqua team. So in this one, I'm going to focus on the beast because I can perhaps focus on an aqua as the back and you can consider it and how you could uh, rearrange your own aqua if you wanted to make a double aqua team. So right now, let's look at the beast and the mech. And we need to change our stats here because the beast does not have a very high health compared to the, your tank. So what you're gonna wanna do with your beast is you're going to want to gain energy and you're also gonna wanna be able to take out or burst your opponent's plant, their tanker as they call it and take it out and also do some damage to the midline as well. In order to do this, you want to have what they call the imp, the ivory stab. You'll see this right here in the front. So I'll click on this one so that you can see it. So that's this little horn right here. The horn has the ability to gain energy per critical strike that is dealt in that round by the entire team. The key, the other <laughs> issue with uh, actually gaining that energy though is it doesn't exactly happen when you want it unless you have a certain part that can enable your beast to deal out a critical strike okay so in order to deal out that critical strike for sure and for sure gain energy we need something else on its back that's called the Ronin So this is the single combat card. 
right here we can see this little ronin tied up samurai type uh, knot he has on his back uh, so the ronin card is this one right here it's called single combat this guarantees a critical strike when comboed with at least two other cards so this one is a good example of a nice beast as well the mouth card we'll talk about later but for right now we can talk about these three cards right here what would make this uh, beast a good attacker or a good mid in your game is that if you pair this card with two other cards at once this card will not do 75 damage anymore it will do almost 200 damage to your opponent so you have to think about that in terms if your if your plant has roughly 500 damage you have really knocked out a lot of health from that plant so and, and in the process, too, you're gaining yourself energy. So you're not only de dealing out a ton of damage, you are also gaining yourself energy. So a lot of people, too, like to get the Cottontail, which is right here. The reason people like Cottontail with this combo is, if you notice, it's a zero energy card, meaning that you can play it without having any energy. But what makes that beneficial to your team is that you need two cards for single combat to work and say you you only have two energy at the moment but you need to do a critical strike and you need to gain energy not only will you gain one free energy from this luna absorb but you will also be able to pair this luna absorb ivory stab and single combat together do 200 300 damage because you have ivory stab doing 70 to your opponent while gaining yourself almost a guaranteed two energy in that round, which will be very, very beneficial. So uh, let, let me talk first about um, the mouth before I go on to the mech, because I will describe a little bit more about the mech if you want to do that for your midline later. Next, the mouth card is also very important. There is one that is called the Nutcracker. I can see one in the market right now, but I'm just going to show you how to do it here for the mouth card. You notice how this little symbol shows teeth and they're grimacing. So you can click that one and it will show you the nutcracker. So this is an interesting one here too. Same with this uh, gerbil hop, but I'll maybe make a more advanced video about different parts later. Let's just stick to the basic team. Okay, so as you can see, this person titled it great genes rimp plus d nut so rimp means the ronin and the imp which is these two combos that i've already talked about if you ever see that that's basically what they're talking about all right so our beast has 41 speed which is pretty good for a beast 31 health which is normal 61 morale which is important too morale helps with the critical strikes i can do another video about those later as well too um but let me talk about these Nutcrack cards right here. So we saw the Luna Absorb here, but this one is another good one that can be used in Arena. So if you allow yourself to just save some energy after the first two rounds, these two cards can really take out a plant if it's paired with a single combat as well, and you can gain yourself some energy. So it's possible, yes, to uh, really use the single combat without a zero energy card, and it's uh, yeah, it's reasonable to to be able to do that. So what makes the Nutcrack card up here that I was talking about so good and important is you see that it does 105 damage right here. Shield is not so great, but the beast you don't have to worry about its shield. But anytime you pair this card with another Nutcrack card, it will deal 120% damage. So that means if you have two of these mouth Nutcrack cards, you can put them both together and they will both deal 120% more damage, which ends up being a lot of HP taken away from your opponent. If you uh, combine the Nutcrack card up here with the Nut Throw card as well, because it has the same uh, properties, 
you will also be dealing 120% damage with the both of these. So it's something to consider if you want to do more offense, you can consider doing the Nutcracker card for the tail and the mouth, but if you want to play it safe and really just gain a lot of energy, you can consider the Luna Absorb here and the Nutcracker here. Okay? So I hope I have not been too long-winded. This will be our last one. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on mechs later because that can be something a little more specific when you're trying to become more advanced. So you can click the clear filter right here and it's easy enough to just clear everything we've done. Uh, now we need to look at our backline. Our backline should be something that is very strong with a lot of damage potential. It doesn't exactly have to gain energy because that will be our beast or our mid gaining a lot of energy. So there are two different ones that have very high damage at the moment that people enjoy using, and that is the bird and the aqua. So I'll maybe go over the aqua because if you're just buying a general team, people um, who are starting out will have an easier time with an aqua. The birds are very good too, do not get me wrong, but you have to be a little more advanced nowadays to use them. So this is not me... Uh, putting some shade or anything, or casting shade onto birds. I think birds are great, but let's focus on aqua if we're creating just a general team. So I'm gonna go here and put up uh, the six purity so that I can just discuss some of the different moves. So if you want to create an aqua, let's start with our tail. One of the most important parts in the tail is what is called the, the koi. Now it's not the only good tail move, but I'm just gonna focus on the koi tail here because again, we're making you a general team, something that's within a budget, you can see it and get it done. Um, so with our Koi Tail, the benefit behind this move is you gain yourself, or you do about 110 damage, you have 30 shield for it, but also you apply speed to this Axie for two rounds when it's comboed with another aquatic class card. So all of these are aquatic class cards right here. So if you just apply it with Hero's Bane, for example, then you're gonna do fine and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna gain that speed. So I, I would suggest this for the tail. Uh, another good one that I really do like, and I think it's underrated as a tail, is the tadpole. So black bubble. Why tadpole is good is it will jinx your opponent. So it does 110 damage, it's 40 shield, and it applies a jinx for two rounds to the uh, to your enemy. So Jinx stops an enemy from doing a critical strike, which is if you're up against a beast and it's open and you can give it the black bubble, you know, that's a good thing as well. So while I'm on this Axie, we will go on and, um, okay, let me backtrack a second. Another, another good one, let me just show one more because I don't think it would be fair not to show this, the Ranchu. Uh, so, this is another good one, Water Sphere. So, notice this little tail right here. It does a lot of damage, 120 damage, and sometimes that's all you need, but it also applies Chill, which when you apply Chill to a target, it stops them from going into Last Stand. And just to explain briefly, last stand is something where a uh, an axie, all of its HP is down, but it has you know a set amount of bars left that it can still strike or be struck. Um, I'll probably go into a video and discuss that more later too. But Ranchu is very good because it has very strong damage potential and it can put the chill upon an enemy. So the fish has a lot of good tail options, but if you just want to play it safe, I would say go for the koi. The next one I want to look at is the, um, we'll go for the back. Um, the back, I see one right here, so we don't have to look it up. We have the um, swift escape, the goldfish back right here. Uh, why people like swift escape is, is you get um, you get more speed onto this aqua. I keep calling it a fish. 
uh, this aqua when it's attacked. So uh, if you pair that with a koi card, this one's not a koi card right here, but if you do pair it with a koi card, you're going to get a lot of speed on this aqua, and it already has 57 speed. And when it has so much increased or buffed speed, as they call it, you have the potential of overtaking the speed of a bird, which is a good reason to have this swift escape, which is this goldfish right here on its back. Uh, also, um, there are other ones that you can use for your back. They, um, they help heal your Axie. So we have Aqua Vitality right here. And if you notice, it's 40, 40 shield and 80% damage. It's good. It successfully restores 50 HP um, for each uh, anemone uh, part that they have. It's good, but I would suggest this for a more advanced player who knows kind of what they're doing and have figured out the dynamics. For now, I would really just stick with the goldfish. Some of the other ones are good too. This has a high shield right here, Shipwreck, the Sponge. Uh, it does 60, but then you get 90 shield, but you ex don't exactly want your fish to have a ton of shield. I mean, it's not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong, so you could do Sponge as well. Um, so moving on now, I would suggest, yeah, go for the, the Goldfish if you wanna stay safe. You could do Sponge as well. And uh, I'll talk about the other ones later because there, there are some really good ones I'm seeing right here that, that could be spoken about. But I'll go into detail about that in another video. Uh, our next part that we want to look at is the mouth. So I see one right here as well that has a decent mouth. So a lot of people like the fish hook. Fish hook does 110 damage and it also applies attack to this axi if it's attacking a plant, reptile, or a dusk. So if you're at attacking the front plant, usually your opponent will have a front. It will do more damage. It's good. It's 110%. It'll get the job done, basically. So if you want something with a lot more damage, though, here's another one that I would suggest. It's a Piranha Crimson Water. This one's a good one as well. If you notice, he's got this grimace right here that he's, he's snarling. Um, Crimson Water does 120% damage, 30 shield, so it's de decent, and um, it can also target injured en enemy if this Axie's HP is below 50%. So if this Axie here, for some reason, is his HP is lower, he'll go for whichever uh, enemy is injured. Um, you're not exactly going to use that a lot, but it's just a good card to have for the 120% damage. Okay, uh, next, so I would go on to the horn, and we have one right here that's also very popular and used a lot. So this one is the uh, Star Shurkin, the uh, Shoal Star. It is about 115% damage, only 10% um, uh, shield, but that's okay. This will stop the um, the enemy Axie from going into last stand when they're hit with this one. So it makes for a very good um, uh, horn or um, horn attack move, I guess. The other one that a lot of people enjoy for a fish that's back is the Hero's Bane, the Oranda. It's about 120 damage, 30 shield, and it also ends the target's last stand. So if you're going to go for a horn, I would suggest those two. They're very high uh, damage potentials. They're used a lot, and you're not going to feel... Uh, you're going you're gonna to be fine. You're going to be able to do a lot with that combination. Clam Slash is another good one. Uh, it's lesser than... Uh, in damage compared to both of those, but it also can apply attack to this one when attacking a beast, bug, or mech, and it has just a little bit more shield. So for your fish, I would stick with a combination of those two cards. Uh, later on, I can discuss some of the other ones if you're doing a double, double uh, aqua team. Real quick, I would just say for double Aqua Team, it's almost necessary that you have Tail Slap right here, this one. 
the Nemo because it will gain you energy. But I'm not going to go into that in too much depth at the moment. This is more so just to get you started, to get a team and something that's within budget at the moment. Okay, are you still with me? Well, thank you for sticking it out if you did, and I hope you learned something. I'll probably do some more of these videos and we'll go over some of the skill cards, some of the different axes that I didn't get to discuss in this round, because I think Axie is a very complex game. It's a fun game, it's enjoyable, but it can be intimidating to start out because when you see the Ethereum price of what you have to pay for it and how much the initial setup is, you can get a little bit weary and you could also stumble and make a few bad decisions and buy a team that's not going to work for you you wouldn't enjoy the game and that would be sad to us because the more axie players we have the better it is the more people we get to try and test out our skills with in arena so if you like this video if you have any questions please comment below and uh, yeah you can smash the like too that would be good for me um, but until next time, thank you for watching if you made it all the way to the end, and I hope to see you again.